All right, I'm Haley Robinson. I'm Laura Beta. And this is Inside at the Berg. Hey, we're going to talk about a few things that are going on here at campus. The app Yik Yak, Thanksgiving break, Ooh. and final exams. So we're going to go right to Yik Yak. Apparently, Yik Yak was an app that was formed in 2013, and in April of 2014, they had so many downloads that they received $1.5 million towards more research and being able to keep the app open. Um, a lot of people enjoy this. They think it's funny. And what the app does is it's said to be kind of like a Twitter feed, but it's anonymous. So you can mm -hmm. literally write whatever you want. People can like it. They can comment. Um, and again, all of it's anonymous. Now, I can see where this is a positive thing because, you know, you can anonymously put jokes on there that you might not think are funny. And maybe they won't be funny if you say them, but if you put them on there may, anonymously, someone might find it funny. However, I feel as though it's just a window of opportunity for cyberbullying. Yeah, well, if you think about it, with this app, it takes your location, and that's how you get your feed. And so people within, I think it's a 10-mile radius of you. 1.5 mile. 1.5 mile radius. radius. If they also have this um, app and they download it, they will see whatever you post and you see whatever they post, but you don't know who it is. So at the, like, there are a lot of media sites out there that are anonymous and are very popular, like Tumblr. That is a huge media site, and that is one that you can be anonymous, anonymous on or you cannot be anonymous on. Same with Twitter. Like, you can make an anonymous Twitter. You can make an anonymous Facebook, you know what I mean? But the thing is, is that with that, you can connect to anybody in the world, and nobody in the world necessarily knows it's you. Whereas if you do it on Yik Yak, anybody within a 1.5 radius is who you're talking to. So if you put on there something that relates to your life, people are going to like know about it because they're in the same vicinity as you. And if you like put like initials on there, yeah, you're being anonymous, but people can figure out who it is at the same time. So it is a boy of bullying. Yeah. Um, I know that there's been some schools that have had policies against it because just severe cyberbullying and honestly, just juvenile pranks are going on. I know mm -hmm. that there was one issue where a student posed as a superintendent, attendant. Intendant. Attendant. It's a superintendent. It's an I-N. I thought it was attendant. Mm -mm. Okay. I said attendant in the blog that I read. Okay. Oh, well. I know that there was one school that had complications that had a policy against this app when a student posed as a superintendent on this Yik Yak app. And what happened is he took advantage of the voice message that was left on phones um, explaining some kind of snow day or weather complication that was coming up. And he took that information and I guess it like the message broke off for some reason for technical difficulties. So the student felt that it was his right to continue the message on Yik Yak and proceeded to say very negative things about the school and the people in it as superintendent. So now the superintendent got in big trouble. Um, they found out the student who did it. And now students are no longer permitted to have their phones on, which I believe some schools have already adopted that policy. But I also know there's a policy that states that you can't um, limit a person from having communication in case a mother like calls right. because someone passed yeah, away. Yeah, you can't tell someone they can't bring their phone to school, but you can tell them not to have it in class, I think is how that works. So, yeah, it's something like that. And now they're, they're not permitted to have it on anymore due to this app. So it's just, a, and I know that there's other students that are having that problem. I believe there was another student on, I want to say Facebook, um, she created a post-it day from this Yik Yak app because someone was Yik Yakking about her negatively and instead of going ahead and replying back and being mean back, she decided to create a post-it day at her high school. Now, it might not have been a Yik Yak, it might have just been, it was some form of cyberbullying. So ultimately, I just feel that this app is horrible. I don't understand why it even exists um, because it just seems like it's you're asking for trouble. I agree. And like I know here at Heidelberg, we are a small school. And because of that, everybody knows everybody. And there have been issues. I don't have a yik yak. I know you don't have a yik yak. No. 
But I've even had issues with Yik Yak, and I don't have one, because somebody will post something on Yik Yak, and somebody will be like, oh, this one must be about you. Um, there are two people with the initials LB in the Phi's, and so somebody will post something and said, LB the Phi, and people would be like, oh, it's talking about you, when really they might be talking about the other one, or vice versa. But either way, what they're saying is not nice, and they shouldn't be saying it whatsoever, whether it's about me, whether it's about her, or anyone. Exactly. Um, so, if you are part of this yik yak trend, maybe you should be a person who says good things or tells mm -hmm. jokes and use it for the original reason it was made for, not for yeah. a reason to gripe or whine or moan or complain or call someone out. Because really, if you're not going to do it in person, you probably shouldn't say it at all anyway. Exactly. Also, if the reason this was created was to be like an anonymous Twitter, correct? Kind of. Um, from the description of the creator, it kind of seemed like he was more interested in letting people, allowing people to anonymously post things like a joke or a status, or not status, but um, a quote, or, you know, maybe even say, I think I have a crush on my best friend, stuff that they wouldn't normally put on their Facebook and just kind of... Because it has that attachment to their name. Right. Right. Um, I guess my solution for this would just be Make an anonymous Facebook or anonymous Twitter. If you feel like you have to put something anonymously. Yeah. If you feel like you have to post something anonymously. Mm -hmm. But for me, maybe I'm just tooting my own horn. I think I'm funny, and I want my credit for that. And even if I'm not funny, I'll still take credit for that because then <laughs> someone can learn from my poor joke and learn to not joke like that. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> All right, moving forward. Thanksgiving is coming up. Mm -hmm. The one time a year it's completely legal and socially acceptable to be a glutton. Yes. I'm very excited. When is it not legal to be a glutton? That's very true. <laughs> I guess it depends on your religion when um, it's not legal to be. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Thanksgiving. This is the one time you get to eat anything and watch football and hang out with family. You only watch football one time a year? Oh, no. I love football. But... I'm just saying, it's a time where you get to watch football. You always get to watch football, if you have cable. I don't have cable. No, Thanksgiving for well, me... Well, then you'll get to watch football on Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, Thanksgiving for me is full of traditions and family. Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. <laughs> um, my grandmother makes these awesome sweet potatoes. It, okay, the stuff she puts in it, I don't know. But she puts in some kind of secret recipe. It almost tastes like pumpkin pie. But they're sweet potatoes. What? Yeah. I think sweet potatoes taste a lot like pumpkin pie anyway. No. I, I think so. My grandma has tried probably four recipes with me. Three of them I've hated except for the one that tastes like pumpkin pie. Interesting. Yes. She likes to experiment a lot. Um, my other favorite Thanksgiving memory is just kind of... Being home for the holidays, especially being at college, and you have so much stress of college and trying to worry mm -hmm. about your future and worry about your grades and worry about your scholarship and worry about your money. And But when you're at home, it just kind of floats away, and you get to be reminded of what childhood was like at one point. Yeah. And you kind of get to gain that back for just a day. I also think Thanksgiving falls at a really opportune time in the semester for students because that is right before um, exams. And so that usually is a time where students will then have more time on their hands. And I know that's when last year I got a lot of things done was over break. If you choose to take advantage of that, if you want to take a couple days off, I understand. <laughs> Completely understand it. Well, since we just got done with Thanksgiving, our Thanksgiving talk, let's move on to final exams. All right, for those of you who have no idea how this works, you will come back to school for three days. You have three days of classes. Yeah, I know, it's horrible. You have a whole break, come to class for three days. And in those three days, you're basically going to be, your teachers are going to be reviewed through this, 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 get their last couple lectures in and then basically say, here's what you need to know on the exam, get ready for it. And then we have reading day, which if you're new to Heidelberg, reading day is where it's the Thursday before exams. And it's supposed to be a day of rest, a day of studying, 
but there is no activities that go on that day. There's no sports team practices. There's no meetings of any group. There's no fundraisers going on on campus. There's nothing going on on campus except for perhaps a study group that you put together. So it's a day where you can sleep in if you choose to. It's a day where you can get a lot of studying done. Basically a cram day. Um, another phrase that students refer to that day as is dead day. Yes. Because literally everything is closed. You are not permitted to do a single thing on dead day. Besides go to the library or computer lab and study? Pretty much. Pretty much. You're permitted to, yeah. I mean, honestly, I've heard rumors of... Uh, some professors even frowning upon students working, which, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, if you're in my boat and you're a commuter and you need to pay your bills, or better yet, if you're not in my boat and you just like to have money in your pocket, I'm going to work out that day. That's just how it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but then you'll proceed with your final exams. Uh, this year, the schedule is very, very different. Uh, for first year students, you have, you don't know a difference because you're only seen this year, but actually, um, Laura, I think you can agree with this, how they used to have all of the even-numbered classes in the morning on Friday, and then all the odd, like, it was all Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes on Friday, Monday, and then Tuesday, Thursday classes on Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, mm -hmm. They've completely changed that. Have it. I haven't actually looked at that yet, so. They have. Um, before, it used to be where it was, like, all even-numbered classes in the morning and then odd-numbered odd numbered. in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and then it flipped for that following Monday from Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes. This year they have it, I think I have um, my computer science exam, which is 9 a.m. normally, and that is going to be at 8 a.m. on Friday, Ooh. which is very different. Um, yeah. In fact, typically on the last day of exams, it was only for Tuesday, Thursday classes. They have changed that now. Um, I will be having my Monday, Wednesday, Friday class that is at 10 a.m., it is now going to be at 8 a.m. on the last day of exams. Ooh. Yes. It is very spread out. So if you have kind of a full schedule like I have where it's back-to-back, -back, you're probably going to be stuck here until the entire exam time, which really is kind of beneficial because it allows students to have more of a spread-out exam time. But it's also kind of frustrating because students like me who know what it used to be, and as long as your exams weren't on that last day, you could go home. Mm -hmm. Well, now you don't have that opportunity. And also they've allowed a 15-minute uh, break in between each exam, so you have time to oh. go to your next class. Um, I know That's that, nice. I know for my major specifically, I've never had a problem with getting to an, the next exam on time. However, I know there are students where their mm -hmm. instructors take advantage of the entire two hours and they do need the extra 15 minutes to get to class. Yeah. So you have that to look forward to. But once exams are over, you get to go home, relax, have hot chocolate, and watch whatever Christmas movie you want. Or if Christmas is not your thing, watch a horror movie or a regular movie or whatever. Float your boat, but you get to go home, yeah. and Mom gets to bake for you. Or Dad. Or Grandma. Yeah. Whoever. Or your big brother. I don't know who bakes for you. Or you. Or you. <laughs> I don't bake for me. I have... I have a friend who does that. We have a friend. We have a friend. Who bakes for us. We're having a baking date at some point. Yes. We're all going to bake. Um, I would like to point out, however, for any student who doesn't know this already, if you have three or more exams on one day, you are allowed to change those exams around. So let's say you have an exam at 8, an exam at 10, and an exam at noon. You are allowed to perhaps take the one at 10, tell your professor, and they will allow you to take that at some other point. Um, you should never have three or more exams on one day. No, and there is specific paperwork you have to fill out in order yes. to do so. So make sure, I believe uh, Dr. Ole is the one that takes care of that email. I know I got yeah. an email recently about mm -hmm. it, so make sure you visit the proper website in order to get that paperwork because it is very important. You don't want to have three in one day. I've tried it. Thank God one of them was just a paper, but still, I technically had three exams in one day, and that was intense. So. Yeah, no, it's not fun. All right, well, when we come back, we're going to have Angie Amaya, who is a senior here at Heidelberg. So don't, hold on, I'll have to start that. All right, well, when we come back, we're going to have Angie Amaya here. She's a senior at Heidelberg. And Nikki Goad here, who is going to be, they are both on different dance teams here at Heidelberg, and they're going to be talking to us a little bit about that. Stay tuned.
<laughs> I'm trying to place myself. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we're good. I'm Haley. I'm Laura. And we're back here at Inside of the Berg with Angie and Maya. So Angie, what, how many years have you been here at Heidelberg? This is my senior year. And what all you are, are you involved in here at the Berg? Well, I'm president of the Hypnotic Dance Crew, and recently I just joined the Final Eight Dance Society. Awesome. Are you liking that so far? Yes. Awesome. So, you're president of the Hypnotic Dance Crew. Mm -hmm. You want to talk us through a little bit what the dance crew is? Yeah. Um, pretty much, it's just like the dance team, but it's more into hip-hop, and different genres like tango, ballet. Um, I'm Hispanic, so we incorporate some Hispanic into it. Um, we did a showcase last semester, last year, and it had all types of genres in it. Oh, that's so, cool. I didn't know mm -hmm. that. Um, so what all events or performances does the HDC do? Well, when we started off, our anniversary is usually for Sib, um, Little Sips Weekend. Mm -hmm. That's where we start off. We do the BC events. Um, we do the pep rallies for Homecoming Weekend. Uh, we also do, it's kind of our thing now, the late night breakfast. We perform during the late night. And pretty much any other event that we find that they'll need a show in. Um, I know we did the basketball once. It was like the basketball game. It wasn't a game, but you know when they like perform, like the basketball players also perform the little show? No. no. I've never heard no. of this. Okay. Well, we've done the March Madness thing. Yeah, something like that. So you've done also something with the basketball. And I think that's pretty much what we're doing. Cool. So what yeah. all do you do as president of um, this I'm pretty much in charge of submitting in the request for any events that we have planned, uh, getting meetings set up, having everybody on the same page, coming up with the practice dates. Like I'll get everybody's schedule and have a, We'll come up with the dates that work for everybody. Um, and just pretty much a lot of planning and working and responsibility for what's going to happen with the team and how it's going to happen. Okay. So walk us through like a typical practice. Well, typical practice, it's usually Sundays, Mondays, and Wednesdays for right now. Um, it's a two-hour practice from on Mondays and Wednesdays is from 9 to 11, and then on Sundays is from 5 to 7. We'll start stretching after we stretch. We all warm up together. And then after once we're done warming up, our choreographer, who's Desmond Hall, he'll start teaching the routine he wants us to learn. Nice. That sounds mm -hmm. very awesome. <laughs> sounds like a lot of teamwork is going on. Yes. We work dancing. together a lot. Because sometimes, because it's just him, and we all have our schedules, um, me and Kayla, will also help them out to come out with a routine. Usually we do one routine and we'll set the time, like the slot, and then depending on how long that is, each individual of the team will come up with like a 45 second routine. And like we'll all put it together and that's like the routine for the show. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, how long have you been in dance, or have you, do you have a lot of dance background? I, we've all literally have a dance background. I literally started when I was 10. I started with hip hop, belly dance, and any Hispanic. Um, I know Kayla, she's done a lot of cheerleading, dance team, uh, Demetra. She's new this year, and I know she's done cheerleading and dance in her high school. Des has break dance, and just him, but he's done break dancing. But every member that has been in the past in HGC and now has had some, like a year or two, of some dance background. 
This sounds like there's a lot of dynamics going on in the group right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a lot, a lot. And I, it's been like that since t 2011 that we started. We've all had our different type of dance experience, but we've gotten. Now, did you, uh, were you one of the founders of the group or did you kind of come in later? Yes, I will, I'm the last one standing from the founders, which is really sad, heartbreaking. Aww. But I was the, I'm the last one. It originally was Elena Jackson, Dwayne Redrick, Jamil Boldian, and me who started it. And some people from my class that left. Um, but the ones who literally started the organization was Jamil, Elena, and Dwayne. The dancers that started were then three, me, Trey, um, Sam, she's a, she was a Yug. I don't know if you guys know her. Sam and Kayla Beck. Yeah, those were the original. But I'm the last one standing. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So do you have hopes of Hypnotic Dance Crew continuing? Are you afraid that through the years it's going to become kind of more dance team where it's structured and maybe the community aspect is going to be gone or... I'm hoping it continues. I mean, my vice president right now is Kayla, and she has really good leadership skills. I know Jamil and me, um, I know Jamil, he graduated last year, but he's still on top of everything. Like, he still gets on everybody's behind and is like, are you doing this? Are you doing that? Like, he even talks to Andrea, making sure that Andrew knows what's going on with us. So I know he's still keeping up with us. Uh, I plan to do the same just because I don't want it to finish. I mean, it's part of Heidelberg. I don't want something of Heidelberg to just go away like that just because we left. Um, our choreographer, he's, he's doing pretty good. I mean, everybody loved the homecoming performance, and we mm -hmm. just got him really, really good feedback of that. And just the dancers that we have right now, they're, they're pretty good. So I'm hoping it continues after I'm gone. Are you, now I know some groups offer uh, audition times both in the fall and the spring. Are you going to open up auditions again in the spring or are you? Yes. Yeah, we do auditions for both semesters, the, the beginning of the fall and the beginning of the spring. Okay. And when mm -hmm. do you plan on having that available? When are the audition dates for a spring semester? We haven't set them up yet because we still need to have our last meeting pretty much. But when we find out that people are interested, we will have them come walk into an open practice. And we'll have them watch it. And after that, they're interested, we'll, we'll just keep, po we'll like, we'll keep being posted with them. But probably once we come back, like in January, we'll have a meeting and probably have it by like the end of January, beginning February. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, does the HTC do anything besides dance? We do community service. We've done community service. Um, last semester, we started working in the teen center. Some of us have gone in there. Um, some also individually will go to like Cedar Point and just mark it down as hypnotic dance crew. So we do community service as well. That's cool. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Do you have, being a, is this your last year here at Heidelberg? Yes. So Graduate being a anyway. senior, do you have any wisdom to pass down to the uh, young underclassmen? Uh, get involved as much as you guys can, because the more you guys get involved, the better college experience comes. Uh, work hard. Don't slack off, because it will get you in the butt later. Uh, and just have fun. I mean, you're in college. Part of it is to have fun as well. Learn from it, grow from it, and just go through like life lessons. Great words of advice. Yeah, yeah definitely. All right, well, when we come back, we're going to have Nikki Goad with us, and then a little later, we're going to play a little game with both of our people who are here with us today. So for now, I'm Haley. I'm Laura. And we'll be right back. My name is Kayla Tidrick and I'm the Director of Wellness and Healthy Living here at the Sourwine Health and Wellness Center on Heidelberg University's campus. 
This facility was made possible through a generous gift from Mary and Cliff Sauerwein. Uh, we are in a $4.3 million facility. The hours of operation are Monday through Thursday, 5.30 in the morning until 11 p.m. Fridays, 5.30 in the morning until 9 p.m. Saturdays, we are open at 9 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. And Sundays, we open at noon and we close at 11 p.m. Upon entering the Sauerwein Health and Wellness Center, you are generally greeted by the staff. Some of the staff's responsibility is checking in members as well as cleaning and sanitizing all of the equipment. You also notice on this floor is our fitness floor filled with our strength pieces which are, include free weights and selectorized pieces which are your machine pieces to work out with. The second floor of the Sauerwein Health and Wellness Center is our cardio floor. We currently offer 23 different pieces of cardio equipment. We have everything from treadmills to ellipticals to a climb mill. Our new pieces include a crank cycle as well as the climb mill. The Sauerwein Health and Wellness Center also offers two multi-purpose rooms. Currently the room is being housed as one giant room, however it can be split into two rooms in case two different groups want to use the room. The room is currently utilized as a free workout facility, so as far as informal recreation, it's also used for student organizations such as the dance team and hypnotic. The YMCA provides at least 15 hours of group fitness classes per semester here on campus, which include anything from yoga to Zumba to Pilates. I'm Laura. And we're back with Nikki Goad on Inside at the Berg. So Nikki, how many years have you been here at Heidelberg? Um, two. I'm a sophomore. And what's your major here? Um, I'm biology major with interest in pre-vet for like large animals like horses and cows. Awesome. Are you involved in anything here at the Berg? Um, just a Heidelberg dance team. And um, what do you do for the dance team? Um, I'm the secretary where I like take attendance and um, I'm supposed to write up minutes when we have our meetings, but we haven't been lately because we've been really busy working on our dance that we're about ready to perform. So where all does the dance team perform? Um, this is the first year that, we, well, since I've been in dance team that we're performing at the football game, and then we normally do the basketball games when all, all of our members can do a dance. Does the dance team do anything besides dance? Um, we do lots of fundraisers. We have a Candy Graham fundraiser coming up in December and like one day before Thanksgiving break. And it's where you can go, um, buy, pay to like have a candy cane delivered to somebody with a little personal message on it. How much are the candy canes? A dollar, I think. One dollar? That's pretty good to get yeah. a personalized candy cane to your secret honey. <laughs> Edward, you're not getting one. <laughs> so, how long have you been involved in dance? Um, well, I did, it took 16 years back home, and this will be my 18th year of dancing. Want to do that again since my phone went off? You want to silence your phone? Yeah, it's just on because <laughs> I'm really bad at answering my phone lately. Doing dance. Um, I took 16 years of dance back home, and then being here for two years, I've done it for 18 years total. Wow, that's a long time. What kind of genres did you study? Um, I was mostly um, ballet, tap, jazz, and acrobats, but mostly ballet and jazz and tap. I'm not good at acrobats. It's a lot of bending. I can't really bend and flip. So would you say ballet was your favorite? Um, I guess, because I got to do point shoe. Point shoes? Toe. Point? Yeah. OK. I call them toe shoes. So what I gotcha. kind of dance would you call the dance team? Like, what genre would you say the dance team uh, dances I'm in? I'm say mostly? that. Right now, it's a more of a what are the dynamics like on the dance team. Um, we have some girls who have been technically trained, and other girls who haven't. So it's kind of a mix, and they bring a lot of creativity to the dance team. What does dance mean to you? Um, it's somewhere where I can go let out all of my stress and issues that I have in my life. When we come back, you'll be seeing Angie and Nikki play a little game, and they're going to go head to head, and we're going to see who has the highest points. So stick around. You're watching WHEI TV 10. <laughs>
welcome back. We're with Nikki Goad and Andy Amaya, and we're going to be playing a little game. It's called Guess That Song. So what you're going to do is you've been distributed a song title, and you have to describe it without using any, the lyrics of the title or the artist. So. And so you're, it's basically like charades. You're going to pick it up, look at your song, and let's say my song is the alphabet song. I can't say A, B, C, D. I can't do that. I can't say it's how we learned the alphabet because that's in the title of the song. I would have to be like, it has the same melody as Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and Baba Ba Black Sheep. And whoever gets it first gets a point. Can whoever has the most points at the it's end. like a kid's... Yeah, you could say it's a kid's song. Okay. You just can't use any of the lyrics, the artist the of the song, or... Um, or anything like super obvious like that. Okay. Are you ready? Um, who wants to start? I'll start. Okay, so we're gonna start with Andy and we'll go this way. It's my favorite song. <laughs> um, okay. Or maybe, I don't know, who was at the pep rally? I was. Okay. HGC performed to this song. Don't tell them. Yes. Ah, uh, wait a minute. No. <laughs> I was at the pep rally and I saw it. They had three songs they performed to. That was the only one I knew. <laughs> <laughs> she guessed it now. <laughs> That's the only song I knew that they performed. This game is gypped. <laughs> you turn. made it. <laughs> I know. That's why I was like, <laughs> it's not nice. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't even know these lyrics. I'm not what to say. Okay, it's by a country singer. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of those. And he's a male. There's a lot of those. I know, too. just hang on. He, like, has a beard. <laughs> this is not helping at all. Um, he, he sings a song about soldiers a lot, and this one's about, like, drinking. There's a lot of those, too. Um, I know this is all country. I don't know. I can't. Tracy Atkins? No. It starts with a T, though. Um, um. It involves those things that you throw things into when you play beer pong. Red Solo Cup? Yep. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> okay. I'm not good at describing. Oh, I knew I was going to hit this one. <laughs> okay, so... This is a kid's song, and it is about people like Santa Claus, Dr. Dickerson, um, <laughs> people of generations that were born back in, like, the 1900s, like, early in the 1900s, and of the, the opposite gender as we. Male. Yes. Paul so. McDonald had a farm. Close. Um, Bingo. What's his name? Oh, no, that's no, no. That's it's about a dog. <laughs> it's three words. Humpty Dumpty. No, that's not a song. It's three it? words, Sorry. and it's about someone who was born a long time ago and of the opposite gender. <laughs> Can't do that. Um, you just cheated. I did just cheat. You know, sometimes people are considered to have young souls or they're considered to have blink souls. Different kind of soul. Young, dark, evil, I don't know. Well, what's the opposite of young? Oh, I thought you old. said it. I thought you said I thought you said old. That's why my brain didn't say it. You were you were close with the old McDonald, except instead of McDonald, it's something else. That, go, that song says, something, something was his name of. No, that's, oh, that's bingo. That's bingo. Oh. It's the same tune as in 1913. We're women. So yeah. So what's the opposite <laughs> of being a woman? Man. Uh, yes. Old man. Old man song. Yes. What about it? <laughs> You're so close. The old man song. It's, 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 it's kind it's of so close. specific to a Instead of the man. old man, it's, instead of that old man, it's, this old man? There you go. Ding, 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 ding. 
Wow. <laughs> it's hard to sing. I thought that was going to be That was hard. <laughs> yeah, I knew I was going to get that one somehow. Mine's a kid's song. Oh, boy. I forget what the other kid's song is. And was. if you're not a confederate, you are... Oh. Think back Revolutionary War. Union. Okay, no. what's another word? Northerners. Northern. What's Yankee. another word? Yankee what? Yankee Doodle, what's his name? Oh, she, yeah. That's his name! <laughs> that's not that's Yankee Doodle. Yankee Doodle. Went to town Yankee riding Doodle. on a pony. Oh, yeah. Yankee yes. Doodle. Yankee Doodle was it. Okay. So Angie has one. So it's one, one, one right now. I didn't get any. You, oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, Never you did. Mind. Yep. It's one, one, one. I don't even know this song. Okay. Um, Could you like tell us about the artist at all, like without saying their name? It has a number, and it requires help. The artist, I think that's what it says. Oh, <laughs> um, I'll help you out because I know which one this is, and you will know it. I do the One Direction or Five Seconds of Summer. Which one requires help? S O S. Oh, five seconds of summer. I wasn't thinking of that okay. one. Okay. So which song? Start naming songs. Amnesia. Nope. Ch uh, the underwear song. Yeah. She looks What's so perfect. Going? Yep. I couldn't think what it's called. There I was just go. like, I was thinking, <laughs> shut up, don't drop your underwear for some reason. Man, I don't even know this at all. <laughs> Nikki has two, on? and the rest of us have one. It's on. Yeah. Oh man. Okay, so. Yeah, this, okay. Hi. Hi. Um, so, <laughs> you all know Bree Johnson, so you should yes. all know who her favorite artist is. Katy Perry. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's, it's her song, and um, I don't want to make it like unfair to her because you guys know this song. Um, okay, so you guys stay quiet and let me say it. Because I should know, because I can't tell you. Um, it's like a, I think it's a newer song of hers. Mm -hmm. It's a newer song. It's about girls and what they do. Oh, oops. Cheater, <laughs> cheater, cheater. I don't know how to tell her without saying the dance team's dancing to it. Because like, you guys know the dance song. Yeah. Um, I am blanked out right now. Bree, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm um, not really giving you clues, so it's no, kind of really not. We're, we're okay, not doing so it's a well. newer song of Katy Perry. Mm -hmm. Is it starts off like was really that like a weird. big hit? I don't know. I don't. Yeah, like at the pop. moment it is. Sure. At the oh, moment, it's a big hit. Yeah, it's it's a newer one. The music video is weird. I don't know if you watch music videos. The song kind of starts off weird. It doesn't like really have a beat or anything. Like it has a beat, but you can't like count it. Is that her video? It's the one that goes. The it's no big deal. The Egyptian. No. no. Video? No. I'm sorry. I'm not helpful no. at all. Um, uh, hmm. I don't know. When you're with your girls and you out, it's not who, what, when, where, or why, but yeah, that the H one. Oh. How? How. And then Nike's logo without the just. Or it. No, there's it. This is how we do it? Yeah, good yeah. job. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know how to like, describe that other than I know the dance team is okay. dancing oh, to it. Was, this is how we do. My turn. It is. I don't know why she put okay, it. Okay, this uh, is like I I think one more. of the most overplayed songs in history. <laughs> it is not overplayed. It's not played enough. It is overplayed. Um, this it was hurt. probably the reason Glee got famous um, because it was in one of their first episodes. Um I don't watch Glee, so. I didn't either, really, and I still know this song. Um, it's not from Glee. It's from, I think, the 80s? It is It is the 80s. The 80s. It is. Um, I'm guessing it's Haley's favorite song or something like that. Because yeah. she's getting um, <laughs> It's about... Is it a Spice Girls song? No. Were they 80s? I don't no, know. Those, they were 90s. Oh, I don't know my decades. They were 90s. Um, you don't. <laughs> This is instead of going, it's Five Seconds of Summer has a song with the beginning, the first two words, um, 
blank, blank. You know, doing when you're pushing what you're doing. through and you feel a lot of doubt. Don't stop. What? What it. are we not stopping? Don't stop it by Queen or don't, whatever. No. I don't, don't know. Don't stop till you get. No. No. Um, no best, best, instead best. of best. don't stop, but you're doubting yourself and you're trying to Don't give up. Don't stop love. And I you're just know. losing you have faith. any hope in you yourself. Have faith. Don't, don't stop. stop believing. There you go. Oh, that makes sense now. Good. Yes. That's an 80s song? Yeah. I don't know my decades. I need yes, help. Yes, it is an 80s song. It's an 80s Okay. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> <Jack> is <laughs> laughing. <laughs> the okay. laughing song. So my song is written by a Canadian. <laughs> Not Justin Bieber. <laughs> I was about to be like Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> I know this one. Canadian. Recent. No, this 90s. is from the early 2000s. And. I don't know if more people are it's from. <laughs> it's from an artist who does a lot of more edgy things. Kind of punk pop. She's kind of a tomboy. You just put a gender. He in pink. No, oh. she's not Canadian. She's American made. Oh. Kesha. Uh, no, she's no. not. She's American. Um, she's American. I'm guessing some here. of her other songs she include was, Skate. Avril Lavigne. Um, yes. Skater girl. Uh, Close. Are they opposite gender? Skater, skater boy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you say skate that you gave it away because I, I thought it was complicated at first and then I remember it was skater boy I had I such never a good one that. I was gonna say when they guessed Avril Lavigne I was gonna say Tony Hawk skater. I, I wouldn't have connected what kind thoughts. of gender is he boy boom those are good hints we didn't say that because <laughs> you said skate oh skater boy I said girl I, I had good better. hints all right well she this did. round Nikki won. Yep. So, we won our game. You were the song queen. For those of you who didn't learn, don't give away even a vowel in the title because clearly people can learn it. And then people like me who put a lot of thought in their clues get gypped. I'm sorry. I got gypped. So, this concludes Inside the Berg. Thank you so much. I'm Haley. I'm Laura. We'll see you next time.